Hello, everybody. Michael Sanchez here. So for those of you guys that are uh, listening to this right now, and possibly you were not in the uh, class today, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things. Um, I apologize that uh, GoToWebinar does not allow video um, broadcast. So everything that you're going to see today is going to be audio. Um, if you want to participate next week, um, you guys can, and you'll be able to see me then. So we have a great class lined up for you guys. Uh, we just talked about a whole bunch of great things in the last class. If you guys can actually raise your hand if you were in the last class, so I can get an idea who's, who's here from last class and who's new. Great. Thank you so much. So, you know, a lot of you guys that are here today are those that, you know, just started playing violin or um, you guys are, you know, uh, maybe been playing maybe three months or you know a little bit longer, and you're just looking for some tips, some things on how to improve your sound. And uh, in the last class, I actually talked a lot about technique and just um, the importance of it. So I'll definitely cover some of that today and uh, answer all your questions. So uh, if you guys can, um, just say hello in the chat box to make sure that you guys are able to use that feature. Um, that's a great way to ask me questions, anything that you guys are wondering about. I love to answer questions, so if you guys can try or just say hello, that would be great, just to make sure I'm getting the messages as well. Thank you so much. So for those of you guys that can't see it, it's a feature right in the toolbar. It's uh, the questions tab. Great. All right, so we'll get started here in just a second. Um, actually, can you guys raise your hand if you're having trouble with the chat box or not able to find it? Bill, you're having trouble? Okay, I'm seeing quite a few of you guys asking questions. There we go. Hello. Okay, a bunch of people are asking questions. Great. Yeah, just keep them coming. Um, anything you guys have uh, wondering about when it comes to playing the violin, feel free to ask in that box. So I see... Majid, Philip, uh, Stephen, uh, Meg, Michael, Magana, I got all your messages, so feel free to keep them coming. Okay, so what I have for you guys today is um, a bunch of poll questions that we can kind of get an idea of who's listening and uh, kind of target the class based on your responses. So right now we have about 16 people in the class, so uh, definitely your feedback is going to be um, factored into exactly what happens in this class today. So. Um, my, my approach and my goal with all these classes is to be really targeted and just help you know, each of you out and um, cover only things that you're interested in learning. So let me start with the first poll question. These are a lot of fun. I really enjoy GoToWebinar for this feature. So why don't we start with what, are, what is your experience level? So you can answer these questions and I'm going to get your direct responses. Great. I see a couple people are starting to answer. This really helps me out to know exactly where you're at and to make sure I'm tailoring the class accordingly. So obviously it is a three, zero to three months class, but I'm, you know, I'm okay if some of you guys are more experienced, maybe just looking for some refreshers and stuff like that. So great. Let me close the poll and then I can share the poll. So it looks like we got quite a few that are in the th zero to three months range. We have some that have been playing over three months, but they are interested in refresher. And then we have 33% that have been playing over a year. So great. Definitely uh, some people in here that are going to really appreciate and enjoy the class because um, we're going to really target the zero to three months range. Excellent. Uh, well, let me get right into the next poll question just to get more of an idea. This is what would happen if you came to my house and you're looking for a lesson. I would ask you questions. So here's the next one. So what type of student are you? Are you an adult student? Are you over the age of eight or sorry, under 18? Are you a parent of a student? So you're maybe working with your child right now or you're a professional? That does happen. Um, you know, maybe you're a professional that, you know, kind of wants to wants to see how I'm running the classes and how I'm doing things. It's totally fine. Quite a few adult students. Looks like a couple kids and a couple parents. So here's the results. 
Very cool. Okay, uh, let's do another one. So what are you hoping to get out of this class? Are you hoping to get inspired to start learning? Are you hoping to get inspired to practice more? Are you hoping to get some basic tips? Are you hoping to learn about if the webinar classes are for you? Feel free to answer more than one. Or are you looking maybe to learn something else, something that I didn't list? Looks like a lot of basic tips. Great. Um, whoever answers something else, feel free to chat um, chat me exactly what it is you're looking to learn. That would be very interesting to see that. <clears throat> okay, there's the results. So yeah, we definitely have a lot of people that are looking for some inspiration some people that are just wanting some basic tips, which I can definitely do, and learn if the webinar classes are for them. So, great. All right. So, let me, uh, yeah, kind of get started. Whoops, hide that again. So, yeah, let me just introduce myself a little bit to so those that have were not in the last class and maybe don't know who I am. So, my name is Michael Sanchez, and I'm a violin instructor. I've been teaching violin full-time for about six years. I've um, had probably about 500 students that have come through my program, and I've actually written a book on violin and fiddle, um, the, the dummy books that you find in most bookstores. I wrote the, uh, the Fiddle for Dummies book. So I, I've uh, spent a lot of my time organizing thoughts on how to play the violin and fiddle. They're the same instrument, just a different way to play it. And uh, I just, I'm really passionate about teaching and just helping others. Um, you know, those that are at this ability level, I would say I'm especially passionate about just because I really like to teach students how to do things the right way. Uh, there's so many people that build bad habits on the violin that later on, you know, they're, they're really struggling because they just, you know, unfortunately didn't do things properly. So, you know, what I taught people in the last class is that it takes, you know, five weeks of really dedicated and targeted um, practicing. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to practice 10 hours a day or, or um, you know, a week or whatever. It just takes, you know, maybe a half hour a day or, you know, at least three or four days a week of really good practice. Um, I've actually put together a list of 30 different fundamentals that, you know, it takes to, to play the violin properly. You know, all those things are things that you can use as a guideline. And, you know, I'll never add to that list. Everything's on there. And I've organized it into six parts. So if you're interested in that list, uh, feel free to email me at michael at superiorviolins.com. Actually, uh, include that in, in the chat box. So basically, that um, that checklist that I just was talking about uh, is really great because it's just going to cover everything that you need to learn to be able to get a good sound out of the violin. So a lot of you guys have probably heard, you know, a few of them, maybe none of them. Hopefully, you know, more than none. Um, but that's really going to give you a great idea. And and really, I could talk about any of them, you know, and it could be a whole half-hour class on it. But I'll try to give you guys kind of a rundown just of the overall um, program, you know, the things that I teach and things that I find important today. Um, and I'll try to give you guys some specific tips as well as I did in the last class. I talked uh, specifically about, you know, just the left hand and, and the bow hand a little bit. So definitely do that as well today. Great. So, you know, one of the things that um, I find, you know, like I said with students is that they build bad habits really easily. You know, the violin is the second hardest instrument to learn. You know, the harp is the hardest. Uh, for some reason, my, my wife plays harp. But um, the violin is the hardest, uh, one of the hardest, um, being that there's so many fundamentals that you have to do properly. So, you know, a lot of students don't realize, you know, that it's just one little thing that they're doing in, improperly that's making them get a bad sound. You know, it could be that, you know, your left hand isn't set up straight. You know, maybe your wrist is... Um, caved in like this instead of being straight. You know, that kind of causes problems. Maybe you're not holding the violin properly. You know, maybe you're not, you know, holding the bow properly or applying the right pressure. Maybe you're not getting all the way to the tip. Maybe you're not bending the wrist. Am I overwhelming you yet? <laughs> um, there's so many things, and everything I just said and that I ever will say as far as fundamentals and technique are included in my checklist. So uh, not to worry, everything's there. You know, the, the first five weeks, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it. It's just so important to understand this. It's kind of like, you know, you're a baby and you don't know anything about, you know, walking or you don't know anything about eating. You have to just have somebody guide you along that path. But once you get there, 
you know, it's going to be a lot more comfortable. You're going to be able to pick up the violin and just start playing with a lot more comfort and you're going to get a better sound and be happier with your sound. But it takes learning things really well in five weeks. You know, even if uh, you're just starting or if you've been playing a year, it, it applies the same. You know, unfortunately, if you've been playing longer and you haven't done these things, it's going to be harder for you. So if you're sitting in the chair right now and you've only been playing a month or a couple of weeks, you're actually in a great position compared to those that have been playing longer because, you know, as long as you've been, you know, saying that if somebody doesn't know some of these fundamentals because, you know, you can learn the right way and then that's going to translate into, into good sound and into proper sound on the violin. So, you know, in the last class, I talked a lot about the index finger and how that's really important for transitioning. You know, that's something that, you know, um, when I first started teaching, I, I brought up a lot of those details, like, say, week 8, week 10, week 12. But what I find is that without bringing these things up early on, it causes students to just really build bad habits. And unfortunately, you know, if, you're, if you've built those bad habits, you're going to be in a position where you're, you're, you're frustrated, you're not getting a good sound, you're, um, you're you know, not wanting to practice because you're not sounding good. So that's why I really try to cram as much as I can, you know, in those five weeks for you guys. Um, I have a great video series on YouTube that I can forward to you, um, but I'm going to try to give you a nice overview of it today, you know, answer any questions that you have about it, uh, just talk a little bit more about my program and just, you know, how hopefully I can help you guys. So, great. Um, let, me, uh, let me do another poll question, and um, also, you know, if you guys have any questions at all during this time, just feel free to ask. So, let's do one more. So, what would you like to start learning today? Are you interested in learning more about me as an instructor? Are you interested in learning how long it takes to become good at the violin? Are you interested in the basics of how to play from the beginning? Are you interested in the basics of how to read music, maybe? Or just why am I having so much trouble with this thing? <laughs> I hear that all the time. <clears throat> cool. So it's great just to get all your feedbacks and Biggest thing I find that's you know helps a student along the best is just having a targeted approach. And hopefully you guys saw that my video I created on that, just how important it is to give everybody individual attention. And this is the best I can do is doing these polls and just um, offering my support via email and phone and everything. So let's close it up and see what we got. Okay, so it looks like you guys uh, find me credible enough. You don't need to hear a ton more about me, um, maybe just a little bit more. And a lot of you guys are interested in the basics of how to play from the beginning, um, learn how, to, how long it takes to get good as something of interest, read music, interesting. Um, and then why am I getting such a bad sound? Great. Okay, so yeah, let me just uh, give you guys some tips. I'm going to open my chat board here so I can make sure that you guys <clears throat> are able to ask questions at any time. So feel free to do that. <clears throat> Sorry. So in the last class, I, I covered um, a lot about the basics. You know, so I, I covered you know exactly what you need to do to start playing the violin. I talked about a shoulder rest. I talked about how important it is to keep the violin level. So we don't want to have the violin way out here, and we don't want to have it way down here. Level is good. So a lot of you guys hopefully know what a shoulder rest is, but if you don't, that's a tool that you can use to really get um, the violin to stay level so that you're not relying on holding it this way. This is improper. It's on the checklist. You want to have that loose hand so that you can shift eventually and you can do a vibrato eventually. What's going to happen is as you, as you start along the path of learning the violin, right now you're not shifting which is basically moving up and down, playing notes up here, coming back down. But when you get to that, if you've developed that bad habit of not holding it properly, you're going to have a hard time. So that's why I'm teaching you guys these things now. And everything I'm mentioning has a reason and a purpose. So if you're wondering, well, why do I have to do that? Please ask. <clears throat> Vibrato is the other thing. <clears throat> if you're holding the violin like this, you're not going to be able to shake. And vibrato <clears throat> is basically where you get that wave, that beautiful sound. So there's so many students that have been playing even three or four years that are struggling with that. And a lot of it is because they just didn't learn the fundamentals properly. So that's where you guys have a great advantage to just really 
take those five weeks and just learn everything that you need to know about playing the violin. So, uh, but like I said, it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes targeted learning, targeted practicing. Half hour a day, that's not much. Three to four days a week. It doesn't have to even be every day. I actually find students that practice more than that, they actually, they're, they're doing what I call um, sprinting in the marathon. So they're, they're doing, do, giving it all they got at first, but then they, they run out of steam. The most successful students that I have are the ones that do, you know, half hour a day, three or four days a week. They don't try to do too much. They write down, you know, questions they have throughout the week. They come to class prepared. They don't do three hours in that first week. That's where, you know, whenever I see that, I'm like, oh, here it goes again. The student that works too hard and then runs out of steam. <laughs> so what it takes is just, you know, just thinking of learning the violin as a marathon. So what I mean by that is, you know, in a marathon, you wouldn't sprint for the first mile if you have 10 miles to run, right? You're going you're gonna to pace yourself. Uh, pacing yourself is what it's all about when you learn the violin or, or any musical instrument, I believe. So, you know, make sure that you're not going too fast. You're just doing the proper things. It doesn't take long to do that. So for those of you guys that think I'm too busy to learn. <laughs> Great. Um, just curious to make sure you guys are all able to hear me. Um, if you guys can raise your hands and make sure that uh, you guys are there and able to hear me fine. Great. Excellent. Looks like a lot of you guys are very attentive and able to hear me. So Great. So, you know, we talked about posture. Um, actually, see, Magana asked a question about shoulder rests uh, real quick. Um, there's a lot of different types of shoulder rests out there. There's ones that, you know, are higher than others. There's ones that are, are lower. Uh, you can even technically play with outer shoulder rests, and teachers recommend that. Um, I don't. I think it's, it's very difficult to hold the violin properly with a hard back going against your collarbone. So, you know, I can do it because <laughs> I've been playing for a long time and feel comfortable with it, but um, a coon, if you guys want to write that down, or actually I can put it in the chat box, um, is a really good brand. <clears throat> also, Sure Tone. Let me write those down. <clears throat> um, those are really nice. Uh, they fit nice, and they you know fit right to your shoulder, and are you know easy makes it easy to hold the violin. Um, I have these on my website. I'm the owner of SuperiorViolins.com. I have all the accessories that you need to play the violin and, and instruments as well. But, you know, you certainly can find all these things on Amazon or any music store locally. But um, just letting you guys know that I do have them on my site as well. So, great. Um, so that's my recommendation. The coons are good. Um, you can even use a foam pad. You can use uh, a foam pad with rubber bands. Or I haven't seen some people use, like, a cloth with a rubber band. So that's also a possibility. Just something that, you know, so it's not so uncomfortable to hold it properly with no hands. Great. So in the last class, I talked about, you know, fundamentals of posture. I, t I started talking about the bow hold. So I know there's, you know, a lot of you guys that were here the last class, so I don't want to repeat myself, you know, tremendously. But I know there's a lot of people here that are new as well. But let me just kind of really explain, you know, how important it is to have the proper hold. You know, if you were to take your hand and just kind of flop it down, you want to make sure that your fingers are curved and relaxed. Um, there's a lot of videos that I can send you that, are, that would explain this. Um, you know, when you're playing, you want to make sure you get to the tip. And to do that, you have to be relaxed in the hand. So a lot of students, they kind of play like this. They don't get to the very end. And, and a lot of that has to do with how much, how much they're grabbing the bow. They're, they're very tense. In the last class, I mentioned the importance of keeping the bow flexible. So if I was to come there, I should be able to, at any point, just grab your bow and you easily circle it around like this. I actually have a, a test that I give students that come to me locally. I'll say, okay, I'm going to grab your bow at a random point, and I'm going to tell you um, if your bow is tense or not. And that's what's basically going to help you or not help you get a good sound. So I'll grab the bow. Oh, that's a six. Oh, that's a little better. That's a seven. I never see a ten. <laughs> There's always some sort of tension of students that they could be pressing up against the bow with their thumb. They could be overall grabbing too tight. Um, lots of things can cause tension. Their wrist is really locked. I even see students that have been playing for three, four years have that trouble. Um, so you want to have that nice, loose wrist when you play the violin. Um, one, one drill I actually didn't mention in the last class that would be <clears throat> really good for me to mention, and there's lots of them, but if you guys want to take a coin, and actually uh, I don't have one here, but I'll use, I'll use a tag. <clears throat> and what you do is you put the coin or the tag on top of your wrist. You start the wrist about neck high, and what you're going to do is simulate a bow stroke. Okay. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to not move the arm so you can actually hold the arm. And you're simulating the wrist bend coming up bow. Okay, if you don't bend the wrist, the, the coin is going to fall or the tag. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm bending the wrist. I'm holding my arm like that. So don't do that with your arm. This is a good drill. I call this the, the wrist drill. So what I'm doing is I'm going down to my side, to my belt. I'm coming back. And basically my wrist is doing this as I'm going. So it's especially important to bend the wrist coming up bow. So this is improper. Watch my wrist is stiff. It's hard to do even. <laughs> I've been doing it proper for so many years, but it's watch my wrist bend come up coming up bow. See that? Really important when you play the violin. So you guys can work on that drill. And I have a lot more of them. I actually have an entire library of drills that I can give you guys. So it's really good to work with the, uh, the checklist. Okay, um, actually, I'm really happy that Magana asked a question that's very targeted to this class. So she asked, uh, how tight should I have the bow? So thank you so much for asking that question. Um, just curious real quick, uh, how many of you guys are interested in that, um, learning how to details, how, to, how tight should I have the bow? Raise your hand if you have that interest. Great. Okay. Quite a few. <clears throat> okay. So basically what you want is you want the bow to be as tight as um, you can. You want to be as close as you can get to the stick when you play without actually touching it. So if you're playing and there's a big gap between the hair and the stick when you're playing, then the bow is too tight. This is where you tighten and loosen the bow, the screw. So if you twist to the left, you're getting looser. If you turn to the right, you're getting tighter. So you actually don't want the stick to be totally straight. You want it to be cambered, okay? But the biggest thing is when you play, you want to be as close as you can get to the stick without touching it, okay? I'll try to get close so you guys can kind of see. Okay, see when I play the gap between the stick and the hair? This is going to be the right way. See how close I am, but I'm not touching? If the bow is too tight, now look at the gap. Okay, <clears throat> so make sure that you guys are basically um, loosening the bow enough to where you're getting that closeness to the stick without touching it. And then make sure that you're loosening the bow when you put it away, because if you don't do that, it can actually cause the bow to warp, to, to break. So really important to loosen it. Don't over-loosen it, just enough to where the hairs are kind of dangling, kind of loose. Very good. Great question, Magana. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Maybe I should launch my next poll question. Um, actually, no, I see a couple people are raising their hands, um, potentially. So, uh, Bill, I see that you raised your hand, and Meg, um, would you guys like to text a question? If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unraise your hand, and you can raise it again if you want to be heard on audio. Okay, I see that Meg said, um, how much rosin should I use? Very good question. So um, basically what you want, and I did a really good video of this at Wiley. Um, it's in Chapter 3 of my book. But basically the way that you know if you have enough rosin in the bow is you take the back of your finger and you swipe right here, the hair, okay? And then you look, at, look to see how much rosin is on your finger, okay? If you have a totally white streak on your finger, you have way too much rosin on. If you don't have any on your finger, then you don't have enough rosin. If you have just in between, just kind of a very light uh, amount of white, then that's perfect, okay? For those of you guys that don't know what rosin is, sorry about that. That, that wasn't clear. Uh, rosin is, let me grab some. I thought I had some over there. It's a block. Uh, it's basically tree sap that goes onto the stick of the bow. I'm sorry, the hair of the bow. And you basically put the rosin on. It comes with any standard violin outfit. comes with it. You put the rosin on, and then that's what's going to help you to grab the, the strings on the violin. So without rosin, you're going to um, have a very wispy sound and not be able to grab the strings. Don't translate that with a bad technique. I see some students like rosin and rosin and rosin and rosin. They think it's because they're, that's why they're getting a good or bad sound, and, and most likely it's, it has to do with your technique. So that's something we'll help you guys with, so don't worry. But 
basically it's important though to have the proper amount of rosin on because if you don't have any you're, you're just going to slide across the strings if you have too much you're actually going to cause the violin to not have as good of a sound so you just have to have the proper amount of rosin on the bow um, as far as light or dark rosin meg i really don't have a big preference um, i would say you know either jade rosin actually i think is the best i'll write that down um, if you guys are interested in um, my recommendation as far as rosin goes um, for some reason not able to text that's weird pretty easy to spell though jade j a d e jade rosin so great um, <clears throat> bill i noticed that you uh, had a question feel free to text uh, in the box otherwise um, anybody else if they have any questions um, majestica i see that you have you raised your hand feel free to text your question at this time <clears throat> I do have one more poll question I could ask, so I'm actually kind of curious to, to see what you guys think. Um, let's do the last poll question. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I guess I, get, I need a drink of water. <clears throat> okay, so um, what has been your biggest struggle so far on the violin? Has it been, well, nothing because you don't have a violin. Has it been right hand struggles? Has it been left-hand struggles, or has it just been practice habits in general, or everything? <laughs> Interesting. Practice habits is big. Okay. See, that's why I do these polls, so I can really see what, what's on your minds. Um, <clears throat> Magid, I see that you asked a couple questions. I'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to close the poll. Wow, 93% of you guys voted. That's excellent. You must think I know what I'm talking about. Okay, let me share. So, looks like right hand struggles, so bow hand. Left hand, not so much. Interesting. 71% um, practice habits. Wow, so definitely going to talk about that. And uh, everything. Very good. So, I'm sure everything that I say will apply to you. <clears throat> okay, before I get to practice habits, let me just uh, quickly answer magic magic. Magic's question. Um, he says, how do I choose the right strings for my violin? And when should I change the strings? Very good question. Um, so as far as strings goes, uh, it's all about, you know, just having ones that are not, you know, old. You know, old strings are, you know, very hard to play on. They're very dull. Um, steel strings are very durable. Um, they're going to be on most of your, you know, beginner violin outfits. Um, you know, if you have a better quality violin, you're going to have synthetic strings, which are the best quality you can get. Um, those are going to have a lot warmer sound, a lot easier to play. Um, dominants are my highest recommendation for strings. Um, dominant, D-O-M-I-N-A-N-T. Um, they're the most common as well. They're the lowest price for, I think, the quality out there. Um, something a little bit less expensive, it would, I would say Helicor. Um, Helicor, H-E-L-I-C-O-R-E, -E, Helicor. Um, those are, I think, the best steel string you can get. Um, those commonly come on, you know, beginner violins. Um, preludes are going to be your cheapest string that is decent. You know, those are not too bad, prelude strings. Um, the best, the warmest strings out there, in my opinion, are um, obligato perastro. Uh, those just have a, just an excellent sound, but they don't last as long. So you're kind of dealing with that. Um, then the brightest string, maybe I'm going too much into detail. Sorry, guys. Um, Eva Parazis, Eva, E-V-A-H, Eva Parasi. oh goodness, P-I-R, R, I should know this, A's, yeah, I'd, I'd butcher that. Just look up e Parastro Eva, you'll find it. Um, but those are really expensive. So if you're a beginner, you're not going to really need that. Um, you're going to be fine with like a helicore string. If, you, if you're looking to have a nice violin, which I highly recommend for those of you guys out there, um, dominance really complement a nice violin. So good question. Um, as far as knowing when to change the strings, it's all about, you know, um, you know how long you play, how much you practice. So if you practice, you know, daily um, over a year's time, you're definitely going to probably need new strings. But it has a little bit to do too with how much pressure you put in the bow and kind of, you know, how you take care of your violin and the conditions and stuff like that. But um, I would say, you know, start looking into asking another violinist or bring it to a shop after about a year or two years for sure, um, as far as replacing your strings. Very good questions. Thank you. Um, Priscilla uh, is in the class. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you said, how are you supposed, 
Are you supposed to clean the hairs on the bow? Very good question. Um, you actually never want to touch the bow with your fingers, with your hand. Um, the oils from the front of your hand can actually cause the bow to get dirty. So you never want to grab the bow like this. That actually causes, um, you know, there to be dirt on the bow, which causes, you know, the violin, the, the hairs not to grab the strings properly. So as much as possible, try to always grab the bow by the stick. Avoid touching the bow. Um, what I told you guys earlier with the back of the finger, that's because there's not as much oils here, and you don't play here as much. But don't do that up here. Let's do it right there when you're checking the rosin on the bow. So, good, great question. Um, so, no, you never clean the bow, but if you have too much rosin on your bow, like I mentioned earlier, like if, if there's a total white streak on your finger, what you can do is you can take the, your finger and on the back side of the hair, flick, and that will actually release a poof of rosin, um, but never do that from the front, just from the back. So there's a good chance that some of you guys have too much rosin on your bow. You guys maybe have just, you know, not knowing you have enough and you kind of keep trying, 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 thinking that it's going to help the sound of the violin, and it does not. It can actually make it worse. Um, so that in that case, if you have a bunch of rosin, you guys can start taking the back of the finger and taking some off. So good question. All right. Um, I do see some more questions coming in, but maybe I'll, I'll cover, you know, the, the big one that seems like you guys are all interested in, and it's uh, learning more about practicing. So um, practicing is a huge topic, you know, that I find a lot of students just kind of don't have this, the proper mindset. I, met, I gave you guys a little bit of an um, insight to that earlier, mentioning that you don't have to practice as much as you think. Um, half hour a day, three or four days a week is perfect, and it's all about quality practice. So most people think, you know, if I just pick this thing up and just do something and just keep trying and, you know, doing whatever, eventually I'll get it. You know, and the reason why I'm not doing good on it right now and haven't for a while is because I'm a beginner. That's not true. I find students that have been playing eight weeks can start getting a really good sound, can start developing um, really good momentum. You know, I've had students after 12 weeks, like, just be able to play through an entire book. Um, be able to, you know, play songs like Simple Gifts um, through the last song of, of Central Elements, book one. Um, I've had students get through book two as, as, soon, as, it, as, yeah, as soon as 12 weeks. Um, I've seen just really good progress, and it's all based on doing the proper things in your practice time. It's not the amount of time as much. It's not, you know, <clears throat> how long you've been playing as much. You get, I think I mentioned this in the last class. I can't remember. One, you know, this class or last, but just that, you know, I ha I've had students that have been playing for like six years and compare them to somebody that I've gone through my program for 12 weeks, and they're way better sounding than the one that's been playing for six years based on that they've developed really bad habits that are hard to fix. So it's all about the fundamentals. Um, there's so many of them on the violin, so that's why I'm here to, here to help you guys. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the biggest thing is just, you know, doing the right things, you know, practicing the right material. I mean, it's kind of like if you're in college or you're studying, you know, in school, you know, if you were to, to try to learn the next chapter, but you have a test on this chapter, you could spend your entire life on the next chapter and you're not going to get a good grade on this chapter. So just try to think of that concept that, you know, yes, you can work hard and take tons of time, but it might not be what you're supposed to do. And that's where I'm here to help. Um, but keep in mind, and this is... <laughs> I see so many different things and scenarios. When I start to say that to students, they sometimes get overwhelmed, like, well, you know, I just I can't build a bad habit. Like, what? how do I know? The, the good news is you can't build a bad habit in four weeks. There's, it's impossible. So um, they say, you know, it takes like three or four weeks to build a good habit, you know, like making your bed or doing something that you should be doing. Same thing with a bad habit. So that's the good news. So let's say you um, take this week and I say, you know, hey, you should practice this, this, and this. And you just, you're doing it and you're like, I just don't know if I'm doing this right. Uh, that's very normal. What you do is you write them down. You come to class here or, you know, to your private instructor and say, these are the things that I'm struggling with. If you didn't have things that you're struggling with, you're not, um, you're, you're not doing, you're not playing properly. You're not, you're thinking you're better than you are because everybody struggles on the violin at first. Um, the key is how fast you get through that struggle and onto different struggles, which, you know, as you progress, there are struggles that, allow you to still get a good sound in the violin. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just so much about your progress and what you guys do. So that's very much related to how you practice. So half hour a day, three or four days a week. Um, I actually did an entire class on this, uh, 30 minutes long. 
um, that talk all about practicing. Um, it's my best one, I think. So if you guys are interested in, in really detailed concepts about exactly like what do I do in the first 15 minutes? What do I do in the next 15 minutes? You know, if you're very technical, that's good. Um, I broke it down spot by spot. Um, so if, you're, if you've been playing a couple weeks or a month or three months and you're feeling like, okay, I just, I pick up my violin, but I don't know what I'm doing. That's going to really help you. So um, feel free to email me with that interest, and I will email you back with that link, um, as well as maybe anything else you're interested in, like the checklist or whatever. Um, but, that, but that practice uh, habits video um, is really good. Uh, it talks about, you know, just in the first 10, I'm sorry, I said 15 minutes earlier. That's if you're doing 45. If you're doing a half-hour session, the first 10 minutes, it's all about fundamentals. So you guys should be doing your drills. You guys should be working on the index drill, the wrist drill I showed you earlier, the rocking bow drill that I showed in the last class. Um, and if you're not sure what those things are, uh, that's where, you know, me sending you some videos or you coming to another class and asking questions, I can help you guys with that. But basically, that's where you really focus on technique. The next 10 minutes, it's all about, well, actually, let me skip that. Let me go to the last 10 minutes. So I've talked about the first 10. Let me talk about the last 10. That's where you want to actually apply everything that you've tried to learn or tried to practice just into playing. What, most, what a lot of people do that are overly technical, I've seen this kind of student all the time, the whole time they're thinking technical, technical. You know, is my pinky too much here? Should it be here? Is my thumb too curved? Or too? That's okay in the first 10 minutes. But in the last 10 minutes, what you should do is just pick up the violin wherever you're at, and just play. What that does is that that's helping you build musicality. It's kind of like a singer. If, if you hear a really good singer, they're not thinking exactly all the time about their vocal cords. They're not thinking all the time about, you know, have I drank enough water today? You know, what they're doing is they're just singing. They're trying to use their, their abilities. And they're trying to translate it into singing. And that's just natural. Even though you don't have maybe natural, you know, feeling yet, you have some. Everybody has some. So, you know, you can just pick it up and just play and try to apply as much as you can, but don't overthink it, okay? In between, so we have the first 10 minutes, technical. Last 10 minutes, very um, musical. In between is where you apply both. That's an area where you can work on, like, you know, how to um, play in tune, how to use a metronome, how to play rhythm, anything that has to do with improving your sound um, on the violin, but also thinking a little bit about technique. So basically what you're doing is you're going gradually into musicality when you practice. If you guys were to just do technical the whole time, you're going to frustrate yourself way too much. You're going to quit. You're, going to, you're not going to want to play anymore. So, you know, most of you guys, I'm guessing, are interested in developing a great sound. You're interested in, you know, being proud of how you play, you know, being able to get into an orchestra eventually or a group. Um, to be able to do that, you don't want to be overly overthink things all the time, <laughs> just some of the time. Um, so that's my biggest advice. So if you guys are interested more in this concept, um, please um, email me and I'll, I'll send you that video. I'm curious uh, how you guys enjoyed that lecture. <laughs> Raise your hand if you enjoyed that. Great. Wow. Awesome. Really cool, just uh, this platform being able to help all you guys and uh, the webinar thing I've been working so hard on and, and um, been so excited about launching today. So I really uh, appreciate you guys being here. And, um, yeah, we're going to have some great classes uh, in the future. Um, I actually have a survey that I have at the very end that I uh, would love for you guys to fill out, just giving me some feedback. Um, and uh, we could potentially do more uh, classes, maybe weekly, just kind of seeing which ones are popular and which ones people have interested in. So. Great. Um, you know, we've been getting uh, just overloaded with questions here. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and just kind of go through those. But maybe in the meantime, I can actually uh, just kind of ask a general question as I read through them, just wondering where you guys are from. So feel free to answer that as I kind of go through some questions as well and see which ones I'll answer.
Right. Looks like a lot of people from the United States. Very cool. I'll just quick close that and share. A couple from Europe. Wow. So I'm curious who's from Europe because it's very late your time. You're, you get the uh, most dedicated student award for the night. Mike. All right. Great. I'm curious what time it is there. If you can chat me the time there, I'll let everybody know how dedicated you are. <laughs> and uh, actually, there's uh, some other people as well. I say others, so maybe if you guys can share that, that'd be cool. Okay, so let me go into um, some of these questions. So there's a lot of them compared to last class, quite a few more. Um, so let me uh, go through them. So I, I do see um, one from D Donalto. Um, how do you keep yourself motivated to practice regularly? Because or before you can start playing songs that inspire you? It's a great question. It really relates to what we just talked about. So um, I guess the biggest thing, Donalto, is uh, once you start seeing progress and start seeing results from my program, from my advice, and just, you know, what I'm doing with you guys is I'm taking everything that I've ever learned uh, both as a student. I've had seven different teachers. I'm taking all of my knowledge of past students. Like, <laughs> if you guys were to to take lessons from me the first week or first year that I started teaching, I wouldn't be helping you guys, be able to help you guys as much. I've seen so many people go through my program. Um, so when you start to see results on that, that's not going to happen in one week or two or three, five weeks, give it. Um, you're going to start enjoying the process more. I, I see it all the time. You know, you know, every single one of my students that, that comes weekly or biweekly to my house, um, Every one of them, I just remember, I had to motivate them. I had to encourage them. I had to say, just please give it five weeks. I promise you this is going to work for you, but you just have to be patient. You know, you have to just do what you're supposed to do, build, build muscle memory, do all the things right, and then you'll start to see results. When you start to see those results, that's when it gets easier. That's when it gets like, you know, you can play more, you know, as enjoyment. It's not going to seem, seem as, as much work because everybody wants to get a good sound. And it, but it's not possible to get a good sound if you don't put the, the proper time in. So um, every one of my students, I could, I could speak here for, for hours and hours about testimonials of starting off, you know, am I good enough for this? You know, how do I do this? All the questions you guys are answer, asking, everything, they were you in, in your seat. And then now they're like, wow, Michael, you're right. Like, I, you know, if I pick up this piece after six months, um, or playing it six months ago, it's, it's much easier. Wow. And, you know, yeah, you're right. After five weeks, it's much easier. It's like over and over again. So it's just a matter of getting through those first five weeks. Um, honestly, I think if you guys, you know, do the approach of self-teaching yourself or, you know, just taking other avenues, um, I've seen that from lots of people that come to me after, you know, doing that. And that's when it gets frustrating. That's when it's really hard. And it's just it's frustrating to practice, to do anything. When you're demotivated that you're not very good and you just feel like you're never going to get there. So I would say that. I would say just having success, which is what I'm here to help you guys with. So great question. Um, <laughs> Priscilla, I just upgraded to a better violin, and the name is the Luciano. Do you know anything about this one? Um, it's very interesting that you say that. I actually, um, I sell Luciano violins. As you guys can see, I have a, a selection of instruments here. Um, Luciano is one of my intermediate levels. So I, I don't think he bought yours from me. I don't recognize your name. I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, they sell, they sell them in different shops in the U.S. But um, yeah, I personally have not um, seen you before. But yeah, it's definitely a great instrument. It has a great sound. Um, you know, anything that I have or recommend to students, um, you know, has, you know, a good warm sound for the price range. So, you know, I have stuff that's beginner quality that I think sounds good, um, intermediate, advanced level, premium level, everything. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely specialize in that. I have a team of people that comes here to, to my house and um, helps me set up instruments and just uh, recommend them to students. So, but yeah, uh, the Luciano is definitely a great violin in the intermediate price range. Um, and if you guys are interested in anything that I recommend, I've actually done a video on um, at Wiley, uh, the Fiddle for Dummies uh, publisher, that I actually compare between some of the violins I recommend. So if that's something you guys are interested in, feel free to send me an email. I can just send you that link or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that I can always help you guys out with. So great. Next question. 
Um, Nancy, you asked about etudes. Uh, you've been having, um, you've been trying a few, uh, just you're not seeing much of a difference in your progress. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, um, an etude is basically uh, an excerpt or a piece of music that's uh, designed to help you um, improve your skills on the violin. So, you know, basically what that is, um, is something that's not something you'd perform for somebody. Uh, it's more like an exercise of, you know, crossing strings or doing various things. Um, etudes are very helpful to improve violin technique. Um, when I talked about the practice sessions, practice session one, two, and three, 10, 10, 10, etudes are really good to put into that middle section because it's not really a musical piece. It's something that you can think about technique more and not so much about musicality, but you're actually playing something and not like doing a drill or doing something real basic. So um, to answer your question, Nancy, an etude is very helpful, but what's even more helpful is how you practice that etude. So unfortunately, just playing etudes all day will not really improve your skill on the violin. And to be honest, it can make you worse if you don't, you know, if you're not doing the proper things. Um, I, there's, it's not a, a coincidence that I have students that have been on the same book for three years and some students that um, have, gone, have been through five books in a year. <laughs> it's not because of the amount of time or the, the type of piece they practice. It's, it's because of what they're doing and how they're applying their practice. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I can recommend various different types of songs and pieces to you guys. Um, the biggest thing is that you guys are working on um, pieces, you know, that are at your level, not too advanced, not too easy. So, you know, as a teacher, I'm always recommending a certain level, you know, and I'm trying to recommend something that's not too easy, not too hard. Um, I normally like students to get through a piece at about 80% um, perfect, you know, perfectness. Um, I don't like them to, you know, spend weeks and weeks and weeks on the same piece. I like to move through stuff. So, um, and speaking of, actually, I should mention just kind of the, the thought going forward with these classes is, you know, I, I'd like to potentially do like an organized class with you guys, um, but like I said, I'm looking to see the interest level and, and, and what students are, are going to be um, wanting to attend various courses. So, you know, in the survey that I fill out, feel free to give me your feedback on if, you, if you're wanting like a weekly class. Um, this particular class is monthly, so, you know, um, for those of you guys that, you know, want to do the monthly, you could also just watch various videos that I recommend to you that, you know, you can email me and I can send you videos. Um, but I know some of you guys might kind of be looking at a more organized class, so just feel free to email me your feedback on that. So, uh, great. So thanks so much, Nancy, for your, for your question there. Um, let's see, any, I, we have a few minutes left here. Um, thank, thank you guys all for your, your feedback. Uh, do you guys, does any of you guys have a question you want to quick um, uh, express on audio? Let me quick just ask that. I'll let you guys raise your hands if you have an audio question. Just <laughs> to prove to you guys that I'm not doing this as a taped webinar or something, which I'm not. <clears throat> um, any questions? If you raise your hand, okay. Um, Don Alto, uh, you asked about uh, the Essential Elements books. Um, I personally teach out of the Essential Element books. I have a, a library of, of all of them, and I actually teach out of them. Um, I also have um, music that I've written personally uh, for violentutorpro.com, which is my instructional website. And um, also in my book, I've written about 50 different pieces out of my uh, Fiddle for Dummies book. Um, but Central Elements is a great method book that I've used to bring tons of students to a certain level. It's very helpful. It's got everything that you need to learn. Um, progressively, so highly recommend those books. You can get those on um, on Amazon um, or anywhere really. Any any music store that has strings normally always carries uh, uh, essential element books. So great question. Um, so it's going to start you at the very basics of how to read music and how to you know do your proper key signatures, intonation, stuff like that. So and book th by the time you hit book three, you'll be doing actual shifting. So great. Awesome. I see Meg actually asked a question about um, going back to a previous session. I'll kind of just give you guys a rundown of how that all works. So I'm going to be sending you guys the audio clips of these classes. So if you don't come, you will get the audio clip if you're enrolled in the class. And you can specify being wanting to be in this class next month just by the survey that's at the end. Um, but unfortunately, Web2 Meeting doesn't allow us to actually have a video of the class. So if you actually want to get the, the video, 
Um, you actually 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 have to attend the class in person. Um, the the audio will show like the questions and stuff, but just not any of the the videos. So. Um, and then, and actually at the end, I'm also allowing you guys to, to hang out. Uh, there's up to six people that can be on a webcam. Um, everybody else uh, would have to be, you know, just on audio. Um, but I'm guessing, you know, there probably won't be more than six that want to be on video. So if you actually have that interest, feel free to raise your hand right now. Um, and I can actually enable you to, to be seen and maybe interact with other students that are here. Uh, maybe you have some just questions uh, that you want to ask others um, or just kind of get to know others that are at the same ability level as you. I think that's a really helpful part of learning the violin is just, um, you know, having community and, and um, you know, feeling like you're not alone. So uh, feel free to, to always interact at the end of the classes. Um, you know, even if I leave, you can still interact. Um, if you have interest in being um, unmuted, um, also feel free to raise your hand right now. But um, otherwise, I just really enjoyed you guys, and I hope you guys um, submit the survey. Um, I feel like I'm out of breath. I've been talking like pretty much nonstop for two hours. But I love teaching, love helping, and I'm so so um, excited that you guys are all interactive and into these classes. So, um, would you guys mind raising your hand if if you enjoyed the class? We'll we'll do that. Great. Wow, great. Well, I really hope to hear from you all, and uh, I do recognize some of your names. I've seen some of you in uh, the webinars last week, um, a lot of new names. So, you know, feel free to, um, you know, send me an email, michael at superiorviolins.com. Um, I also um, gave my phone number in the last um, webinar, and for some reason I'm not able to text. Uh, maybe let me try again, um, you guys. But... I'm just going to give it to you guys here in a second. So if you want to have a pen and paper, if you guys want to give me a call tomorrow, um, I will be available uh, to answer any specific questions you guys might have and maybe you didn't want to ask tonight. Um, I'm available all day to do that. So don't be shy. about to give my phone number here in a second. If you guys are have a pen and paper ready. Still trying to see if I can chat it. For some reason it's not letting me. Okay, so my phone number is 616-299-9196. And I think I might have just been able to, to text it. Did you guys get that? Raise your hand if you saw it. Cool, okay. So there's my phone number. Um, so otherwise, but yeah, here's my email address. If you guys have any questions. And then next month, we'll be holding another uh, zero to three months class, and uh, I'll be giving updates about classes weekly, so you guys can definitely um, kind of see what I have available. But this particular class uh, specifically is going to be um, next month, so we'll be talking, kind of continuing on our, on our road, on our progress from what we talked about today. Um, I'll try to listen to each class beforehand to make sure I don't, you know, um, cover the same things. And um, so, yeah, I hope to see you guys all next month or maybe sooner. So thanks, thanks so much, guys. Raise your hand to say goodbye. <laughs> That's like the way of, of communication. Cool. I'm so excited. I'm going to go tell my wife how great this went. This is really cool. Um, Web2 meeting. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, I guess I'll get it in a second with your feedback, but raise your hand if you thought the, the whole experience worked with GoToWebinar, if you liked the, the platform and just how... It allows you to ask, raise your hands, and if the audio and overall experience is good, good. So yeah, I'll, I'll be looking at all your feedback soon, um, and that will kind of help me in how I conduct things tomorrow and, and going forward. So thanks thanks so much, guys. Um, I'll quick un, um, lower your hands. If you want to be unmuted at this time, please raise your hands. I do have to do that manually, um, and I will be leaving here soon. Well, actually, you know what? I can stick around. If you guys want to chat with me now, um, feel free to do so, actually. I do have some time. Even I don't have another class coming. Sharon, I just unmuted you. How are you doing? I just unmuted you, Sharon. I if you'd I'm like. doing fine. Yes, I'm here. How are you doing? I'm better now that I finally got to join. I had some issues, but I finally figured it out. 
Awesome. So tell tell everybody about yourself. Well, I'm a 65 year old grandmother that's trying to learn to play the violin. <laughs> Awesome. I play several other I play several other instruments and I've always enjoyed the actually I'm going to play it as a fiddle but <laughs> I have to start somewhere. Thank you. Very very good. Yes, I I kind of talked a little bit more in detail last class about uh you know violin versus fiddle. Um I'm guessing you know what that is, but for those of you guys that don't know, it's mm -hmm. uh just the style of how you play it. So you got your, you know, your classical violin which is more you know, traditional vibrato and shifting. Where fiddle's more you're sliding. <laughs> I've always said that a fiddle is just a violin with an attitude. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. So the fiddle is a lot of fun. Um, in the last class, I kind of suggested. Um, to you guys that, uh, well, first of all, you have to learn the basics of both instruments, um, you know, to, to be able to play them well. But then once you get to a certain point, say three months, six months, then you could start delving into also playing the fiddle. So I have a lot of students that do both. So sounds like that's right up your alley. I think so. Thank you. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> okay. Great. Does anybody else want to say hello or be uh, unmuted at this time? pop up the chat box, make sure nobody has any questions or issues. <clears throat> cool. So where are you from, Sharon? I'm from Lindale in East Texas. Okay, great. I actually have a student um, down in Texas. Uh, she's uh, in her mid-60s as well. She's actually going to be in the classes later this week. She's been taking for me for two or three years. Um, but she's an uh, accomplished pianist. She's uh, been playing piano and teaching piano for 40 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, uh, she started playing not knowing anything, and she's gotten pretty frustrated because, you know, she's so good at piano, and now she has to learn how to play the basic you know, the basics of the violin. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different. <laughs> but uh, no, now she's playing in church. Um, never thought she would have done that. She's uh, really enjoying the process. And um, yeah, I mean, we work every week on technique, but um, she's starting to feel confident and she's uh, uh, actually do like a, a, a digital recital and she participated. Hmm. Well, since I missed part of the first part of this webinar, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Like, where are you now? Where are you from? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, and this, that might be great for others that are listening, too. So, yeah, my name is Michael Sanchez, and um, I've been teaching full-time six years, and I'm up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I uh, have, well, I had about 60 students. I'm down to quite a few less because uh, I'm kind of focusing now more on the webinars and the online stuff. But... Um, I've taught a lot of lessons, and at one point I had 80 students, um, and uh, wow. I teach students from all over the globe. So I've had students from Australia and uh, Germany and Japan, and as long as they speak English, I've probably taught them, you know, somewhere in the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just great, this di digital technology, just the ability to help people from all over the world. And... Um, <clears throat> now that you know the a lot of people's internet connections are, are relatively fast a lot faster than they've ever been and um, just technology going forward it's just a great way to teach people well this is the first online class I've taken I've kind of watched a few uh, YouTube <clears throat> videos of different lessons and things but I'm excited about this we uh, webinar great that's what I want to hear so um, I hope to see you in the next class and uh, <clears throat> There's quite a few people still here that are probably listening, um, and I actually noticed a lot that were, you know, in, um, you know, 50s plus range. Uh, so actually, last a uh, couple years ago, I did a class just for, um, you know, adult students. So that's also something that I, I potentially will organize um, if, you know, people like yourself are interested in that. Uh, I have a group of ladies that meet every week as well here locally that um, they all play uh, in a group together. So. 
uh, there's always something to do and something fun to do on the violin. Well, that's a little far for me to uh, attend every week, but uh, webinars will be great, yes. <laughs> no, not saying that you join their group. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually what's what's interesting though. Actually, um, is uh, there's a program now that you can actually use to actually be in the same exact timing with somebody else. So you can actually play like a duet with somebody if you have a certain um, program. I haven't used it yet, but uh, that's kind of where things are going. You know, you can uh, play with somebody you know across the world. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> so cool. Do you uh, do you have? Um, kids that play violin or fiddle or anybody in your family that is an enthusiast? Or? No, I'm kind of the musical leader of my family. I play just about everything I can get my hands on. I'm just, I just enjoy all, all kinds of music and the different tones of all the different instruments. and I just uh, love music. Great. i um, just curious, how did you originally find my lessons? Were, was it like on Facebook or um, through, through a friend? or? It was on Facebook. Uh, I share so many friends who are into so much, so many different uh, instruments and everything that uh, I get links to all kinds of things. And I saw this link and uh, thought it would be interesting to pursue my, my violin lessons through a webinar rather than waiting for uh, various workshops at the many musical festivals that I go to. Cool. Great. Well, there's a lot of classes offered, so I hope to at least see you in this one next month or maybe maybe some others. So thanks for coming. Well, I definitely want to continue with this one, yes. Great. Thanks for coming. Great to meet you. And um, if, you're, if you're interested in, you know, being on video anytime, anybody in this class, um, there's six potential uh, spots for that. Um, if anybody's interested in being on um, off audio, uh, unmuted, uh, please raise your hand as well. If you'd like to maybe speak with Sharon or ask her a question. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's listening. Actually, if you guys could raise your hand if you're, if you're listening or if you're uh, just kind of hanging out. Okay. So there's a lot of people listening. Um, yeah. Don't be shy. If you have any questions, um, I, I have some time to hang out. So... Um, Bill, I've seen that you've really participated quite a bit. Um, appreciate your uh, time here. Um, Majid, uh, I remember seeing you last week uh, participating in both class, both webinars, so thanks for coming. Um, Mike, I hope you haven't fallen asleep yet because you're in Europe and it's probably 4 a.m. your time. <laughs> um, who else do I know? Everybody else I, I do not know, so I would love to, to hear from you. Um, Go ahead and ra anybody raise your hand if you just would like to tell me about yourself and where you're from. Stephen, how are you doing? Stephen, how are you doing? How are you? I'm good. Um, where are you from? Uh, from Boston. Okay, great. Did you enjoy the webinar? Yeah, I did. It's uh, really interesting. I like it. Great. So uh, are you a brand new player or have you um, uh, haven't quite t taken the steps to start yet? Um, I uh, just actually took my first lesson with a teacher. I've been uh, going over your videos on um, YouTube and such and uh, a couple other um, online things, but Last Friday, I did my first actual uh, lesson with an instructor personally in Facebook. Great. Are you uh, feeling frustrated or overwhelmed or excited? What's your emotions? Uh, so I learned to play guitar a long time ago, so um, the left hand is fine. Um, the right hand is looking <laughs> uh, frustrated would be a good way to say it, yeah. <laughs> The whole Boeing technique is just driving me crazy. Great, yeah. If you said um, you haven't had trouble and you, you know, you're, everything's fine, I would say he probably hasn't practiced much yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, the end of the bow is actually what gives me the the most trouble. It's uh, I'll be getting a good sound, and then all of a sudden, and I know like there's more pressure toward the frog. 
but then all of a sudden it'll just turn into this like sliding glassy sound. Uh, yeah, that's a. I really didn't mention that much today, but just um, you know, keeping the bow straight is is a whole big animal in itself. Um, if you're sliding around a lot, um, there is a tool you can get um, that actually it's like a metal. It looks like headgear for dental headgear. It actually fits around your violin and actually forces you to keep the bow straight. Um, that's worked pretty well for my students because it, that's kind of the last thing you want to think about is keeping your bow straight when there's all these other things you have to work on and do. Um, so it's called the Bowrite tool. Um, you can get those on Amazon or whatever. Um, but yeah, it just basically fits right on and you basically forces your bow to, to be straight. So I, I just oh, cool. I heard you saying wispy and gliding around. Whenever I hear that, I, I think that's that's the first thing I think about. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Does anybody else want to say hello and introduce themselves? Uh, Ace, how you doing? Whoops. There you go. Ace, how you doing? Oh, maybe your audio is not quite working. Does anybody else like to say hello? Maybe to uh, Stephen or Sharon? Say, uh, tell, tell us where you're from. Uh, Stephen, do you have any other any other questions or comments? Um, <coughs> sorry, um, nothing off the top of my head right now. I'm just kind of like overwhelmed with the whole process. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, that's you know, that's, uh, that's that's the thing, you know, with um, targeted classes. I think that's actually a huge part of people's reason that they get discouraged. Um, so. The second you feel that way, just, you know, type in a message or say, hey, you know, this is, uh, I'm not getting this or that, or send me an email, give me a call. Um, it's very normal. You know, that's where it's hard to kind of judge pace when you have 15 people. Um, but people that, you know, are maybe feeling overwhelmed, um, maybe like yourself, uh, there's a lot of things I could really say to really encourage you because um, it really is just a matter of going through those five weeks. Um, if, if you're if you haven't watched my videos or haven't really taken, like you said, you've only taken one private lesson, you definitely haven't gone through that yet. So it's very normal to be overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it is an interesting process, though. It's just you know, uh, like a friend of mine says, I'll get there. <laughs> yep, just keep at it. Uh, the biggest thing is just not to think too much and just you know practice when you can and. Um, if you need some resources, um, maybe you know maybe you're feeling overwhelmed by the amount of videos that you have available to you. If you need kind of a targeted approach, um, feel free to email me, and I can kind of give you uh, you know step A, step B kind of thing. I appreciate that. I've never been to Boston. I would love to visit. Uh, if you if you play the fiddle, if you're interested in Celtic fiddle, it's a great place to go. Is it okay? Um, Cool. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of um, people of Irish descent, a lot of um, Irish bands, Scottish bands. And, uh, actually, my teacher is um, she um, she's from Canada and she does maritime film in her area of interest. Uh, a lot of film going on over here. <laughs> That's cool. Is that is that what you're looking to learn, or um, mostly violin, or you're just not sure? Oh, both. I it, down the road. This is I know this is like like you said earlier. It's a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You know, so. Learn how to play cannon. Go from there. Cool. So we'll we'll be seeing you maybe uh, in, in next month's class. No, not Cool. All right, so uh, yeah, and for some of you guys too that maybe felt like today was a little bit too easy for you, that's also a possibility. Everybody kind of learns at different paces. Um, feel free to consider my three to 12 month class. Uh, that's gonna cover 
uh, more about kind of learning specific pieces, different key signatures. Um, definitely be kind of more of a, um, you know, you've kind of been through the five weeks kind of thing, but um, everybody's in a different place. So feel free to consider those. Um, the email I sent out today kind of has all the, the possibilities uh, that are coming up. So great. So thanks so much. And I hope you guys all, um, you know, consider doing that survey at the end. And um, that'll kind of give me some feedback. And I just realized I didn't stop the recording. So whoever listens to this will be listening to a very long session. <laughs>